Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing good. Today I want to show you a frost canoe. Um, it's one of the vintage ones made probably late 70s, early 80s. And those are the ones I like to clock best. As you'll see out here, I got quite a few. Um, I'm kind of partial to the uh, late 70s, early 80s models because during that time period I was carrying a buck 110 on my belt and my knife of choice for my secondary was um, Frost and that's because Frost was still building their knives with um, natural handles whether it be bone or wood and at that time most of the other makers were had already switched over to Delrin and um, of course you had Imperial with the shell handle um, but yeah, I don't know. I just took a liking to the frost. They were cheap and they were well built So uh, I had quite a few of those uh, During that time period But anyway, we'll take a look at this uh, canoe here in a minute But first I want to give, uh, give a shout out and a thank you to everyone that uh, sent pictures in for the Thanksgiving slideshow um, I thought it kind of turned out all right and got some pretty positive uh, feedback on it. So I'm going to do another one for New Year's, and I'm hoping this time around more people participate. Because if you noticed on the Thanksgiving slideshow, I had to use a quite a few of my knives, and I'd rather see your guys' knives. Um, I get to see my knives every day of the week, so... Um, take some pictures of your old knives, your new knives, and when Christmas comes along, if you get a knife for uh, Christmas, take a picture of that and um, just send it over. I'll leave my email in the description box, and I'll remind everybody uh, pretty much every video till then, all right? Cool. Uh, now, the other thing is uh, one of our new subscribers, Ernest left a comment and he was wondering if anybody remembered let's slide this over here if anyone remembered um the little knives that you would get out of the bubble gum machine and them little plastic eggs and i think this is one that you're talking about ernest ernest this is in imperial and it looks like it's from that time period and I do remember them knives that came out of them little um, plastic eggs or plastic shells. And if I remember right, they all had these um, tiger print, tiger striped shell handles. And it's, like I said, it's imperial. You can see I cut my nail way too short. It's a pretty cool knife because it's actually got half stops. But let me know if that's um, what you're talking about. I got this from a TSA grab bag. So a TSA agent actually confiscated this from somebody before they boarded the plane. Which is kind of ridiculous, but I guess safety first, huh? But um, yeah, if anyone's not familiar with the TSA grab bags, if you go on eBay... I think they still do them. Um, I did a couple of them last year. Uh, I think one last year and one the year before. And <clears throat> that's when uh, the sellers did it a lot cheaper. Now I think they're overcharging because they charge a lot for shipping. And what they'll do is for like um, $17, $18, they'll give you uh, seven or eight knives and not tell you what they are. It's just kind of like a grab grab bag uh, treasure hunt. But the deal is the shipping. Um, they'll charge you like uh, $18 shipping too. So it was actually worth it last year when I did it because I actually got a couple good knives with it. I got a Victorinox and um, one of the Frost knives over here. So let's take a look at everything, do a quick spin around the block, and I'll show you that canoe. 
over here in the candy corner is some stag. Now we just looked at these two on the last video, so I figured I'd throw a couple more out there. This is a highly un unimpressive piece of stag from GEC. Now this side's all right, but I don't know. You guys tell me. <clears throat> I, I didn't like this piece. But this is a uh, 44 pattern. I do like this one. This is a custom. It's a Winchester 1920s to 30s frame. And I'm just guessing that because Winchester doesn't make their Barlows with stag, um, they probably were bone covers that broke. And someone did a custom. And you'll see that's some pretty sweet polished stag. One of my favorite Barlows right here. And it's all cleaned up. It's got the half stops and walk and talk. No stamp on the bolster. Really nice Barlow there. Oh, and for what I was carrying, speaking of stag Barlows, over here what I've been carrying the last couple of days, of course, is the Otter 3 rivet. And... The Arthur Wright Stag Barlow. This is a, a knife Slick Slicer gifted me a while back. And it's one of my favorite carries. Some beautiful stag there. I really like this type of stag. It's almost like a marble stone. So I figure that's worth another look. But let's continue with the spin here because I want to show you this frost knife. And you guys are going to be highly impressed with it for since it's a $15 knife shipped to the door. This here, I thought this deserved another look. This is a Parker. And this is the Little Bandit. Really cool knife. Well built too. Um, some nice bone covers. And a beautiful, uh, joyful etch. So, yeah, you can pick one of these up for like $35 on eBay. Which is a good price for a big knife like that. But let's go over here to some of my Frost. Now, these top three are what Frost calls their Excelsior series. And the Excelsior series has the Bomb Shield... With the um, Jim Frost signature on it. Um, all three of them have that. So one day I'm going to show you guys those. These are all really, really nice knives. Well built too. Um, I think I've shown this. This is a Frost. But it's called a um, Black Caliber knife. Which is a Barlow. But this next one is... From the very rare Frost Family series. And these you're only going to find on the secondary market. Because I don't think they make them anymore. You'll see it's um, 440 stainless steel. Hardness of 5658 imported bone handles. So let's take a look at this real quick. This I'll be doing a video. Look at that. Now the badge work isn't. The shield isn't the best, but I think that just needs to be cleaned up, really. But the covers are pretty nice. And this here was under $15 shipped to the door. Uh, it's a lock blade. And look at that. They have just like the Puma, a little Rockwell test. And this here is probably my favorite. Check out these genuine ebony handles. I've carried this quite a bit. This is a frost cattle knife. As you'll see there's three blades. Get your clip point. A dog it up sheep's foot. And this funky little... um 
I guess. I don't know. Would there be a drop point that don't drop? Well built, but beautiful ebony covers. And we'll put that back there. I got to do a video on that. <clears throat> then over here is just some more. All these knives here are under $20 shipped to the door. Um, my favorite being this here that I got for like $13 shipped to the door. This is a genuine ha hammer brand. And these were made from 1945 to 1955. Hammer Brand USA, and I guarantee you, you won't find one in this condition. I was extremely lucky to find it. it this almost uh, mint. I mean, it's a shell handle, but it's got walk and talk. Nice little barlow. It's only three inches long. Uh, this is a Craftsman. I think it's called the Middleman where it's better than a stockman to me because it just has a clip point probably a turkish clip and a sheep's foot no spade blade and let's see this is a trade usa uh, old timer peanut same type blade so all these under twenty dollars this one here is um, if you guys remember Edgemark, uh, these were competing with the Gerber brand. Um, I forgot the model number, the 9225, or I think it was, with the uh, rosewood ha uh, inlay. This is genuine ebony, made in Japan. It's called Edgemark Explorer, and this was made in Japan. <clears throat> really snappy. Nice little lock back. This I got in the TSA grab bag too. But anyway, just figured I'd go through a, some of my uh, less expensive knives that I really cherish. I mean, it's kind of one man's junk is another man's treasure is the way I look at it. Let's take a look at this. Now this one, you guys are going to really like this one. Let's pull this up. Slide it right in there. Might as well get Bill in the picture too. Look at them covers. Now I'm thinking I just didn't come with a box, but I'm thinking it's an Appaloosa bone, the way it's been dyed. But the cool thing about it is watch when I throw some angle on this. You can see, hopefully I won't knock everything over. You can see it's been jigged and sanded down for a pocket worn effect. Really cool. Now the etch, I don't know. Some people might think it's a little corny, but I think it looks pretty cool. Got a couple Native Americans uh, in a canoe out hunting for some deer or some water buffalo, one of the two. Uh, the thing is, this guy here needs to practice his archery so one day he can be the shooter and the other guy can be the paddler. I wouldn't want to be the paddler. I'd practice every day to be as good or better than that guy <clears throat> so I wouldn't have to paddle. <laughs> uh, okay, let's take here's the stamp, frost cut cutlery, and let's take a look at the pile side. Once again, some beautiful dye. And it has the jigging and the pocket worn effect. Now one thing with your frost knives is you're gonna, sometimes you get the spring pin where it's, it looks like it's not knocked in all the way. See how, and you can, if you wanna get brave, take a Dremel tool or something and grind it down a little bit. I'm just going to leave it because it's not jagged. You can see it's got a rounded head. And I think that's why it's not made to get knocked all the way down. It's almost like a nail head. You can see that. 
So some people might find that to be a problem. But what I like about frost, too, is they don't put frost all over the bolsters. There's no big FF or FC all over the place. Um, no shield, just nice clean bolsters on both sides. Let's slide it out here, see what it looks like in the hand. Drop this down a bit. And they're pretty snappy. Uh, fit and finish. Looks pretty good. A little bit of separation here. You got to remember this is a $12 knife with $3 shipping. Um, or I think it was even less than that. I think it was $9.99 and $3 shipping. And then with tax, it was under 15 to get it to my door. No blade wobble. Nice and solid. Got a big choil area to choke up. You can see there is a little bit of blade rub there. But like I said, for the <clears throat> that beautiful handle... I like it. Then over here, a nice uh, profiled pen blade. Also, no blade wobble. Nice and clean, never been used. Wish I had the box though. So I know for sure if this was dyed to be an Appaloosa bone. But anyway, my friends, that's it for the, my first frost. Um, here's another cool one. I don't know what the heck this thing is. It's a trapper, but I don't know what. This is some kind of... Uh, a piece pipe trapper or something. Maybe you guys can help me with that. I bought that for, I think this one was $5. But the spade blade's pretty cool. So, anyway. That's it. Tell me what you think. Down in the comments. So, until next time, my friends. Take care. Peace. Bye-bye.